So basically this video was recorded and written back in October, but I never ended up finishing editing it until just now because fuck me, my life is hell. So here we are. Um, it's January. I didn't edit any of the parts of the video where I talk about it being October or like trying to get shit done before Christmas. Uh, so just know that this was supposed to release then. It obviously did not. Sorry about that, but I will work on that WandaVision video. That is my next project. I, I promise. I, I promise, guys. When you hear someone talking on the internet about the best Spider-Man video game, you usually hear Marvel's Spider-Man or Spider-Man 2 or Web of Shadows if you're on the obscure game side of the internet. However, my favorite Spider-Man game is Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Now, before I face a wave of vitriol, I know that technically speaking, this is not the best Spider-Man game, with it being two generations old and having way less extra than the other games lacking an open world. To me though, what it lacks in technological advancements and production value it more than makes up with its charm and with its creative, almost cinematic levels. So today, while the WandaVision video is still on the back burner, I'm working on it, I wanted to take a minute to dive into the game and talk about all 12 levels from worst to best. As a bit of a disclaimer, I will not be ranking the tutorial or the ending boss level against Mysterio, because I really don't count those as levels and they wouldn't rank that high anyway. So without further ado, let's start. This is a level with the juggernaut where he doesn't say, I'm the juggernaut, bitch. Zero out of ten. Okay, but in all fairness, this level is not the greatest, and for one of the last levels, it's a real letdown. Unluckily for the classic or amazing Spider-Man, his gameplay is the most basic of the four as he focuses more on combat than anything else, making his levels less imaginative. This is an example of that. The level starts off well enough with a one-on-one -on -one fight against the Juggernaut, but after this part, Spider-Man needs to fight Silver Sable agents, which are really annoying by the way, until the eventual fight with Juggernaut at the end. I've never been a fan of ninja-like enemies, as I feel like depriving the player of the opportunity to chain combos, especially when a character is combo heavy, is kind of a lame handicap. The story of this one is pretty lame too, and a missed opportunity unfortunately. It follows Spider-Man confronting Juggernaut for a piece of the tablet and getting intercepted by Silver Sable and her goons. Instead of showing the effects of the tablet on both Silver Sable and Juggernaut to see how it would affect both of them, it just uses it on Juggernaut to make him the big strong. Now, this level still has good moments. As said earlier, the beginning fight is pretty fun and the segment right before the end where you have to scale the tower from a 2D perspective is pretty good, but overall the level is kinda sad and really upsetting when talking about the fact that it's the last amazing Spider-Man level in this game. Excellent. Now hurry back Spider-Man, there is still much to do. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. Another amazing Spider-Man level, and this time it's the Sandman level. This level's gimmick is to throw water barrels at the sand enemies created and then hit them. Overall, this level is just fine. The highlights of this level are definitely the part where Sandman chases Spider-Man in a narrow cave and the boss fight with a giant version of Sandman. This level has a mid-story, which isn't outright bad, but it only really gets interesting at the end where the tablet piece gives Sandman split personality disorder as he argues with himself about whether or not to trust Spider-Man. You can tell that Spider-Man is trying to help, and Sandman not letting him is both upsetting and believable. On to the rest of the level, the majority of it is pretty unimpressive, with it basically boiling down to dumping water towers on a sand tornado created by Sandman, and I didn't find it all that fun. Nothing as bad as the Juggernaut level, but nothing special either. Well, it wasn't exactly a day at the beach, but it was worth it. And now to clean the sand out of my shorts. This is where it gets hard because the next few levels are really good and enjoyable, 
but from now on I'm going to be focusing more on how the levels shake up the formula of the gameplay and if the story is compelling. That being said, the level that takes the 10th spot is the Hobgoblin level from the Spider-Man of the year 2099. This level was super fun, and a lot of it comes from the back and forth between Spider-Man 2099 and the Hobgoblin, who is brilliantly voiced by Steve Bloom, who voiced the Green Goblin in the Spectacular Spider-Man TV series. Nice try, but my nanofiber wings broke the fall. Nanofiber? How'd you get your claws on that? Oh, do you love to Yeah, that's why I asked. The story followed Spider-Man 2099 trying to figure out the origins of the Hobgoblin, which while it is basic for a one-off level, it does kick off the overarching story for the 2099 universe. Another point in this level's favor is the skydiving sections, which are different as those you see in other levels, because you can actually attack the enemy while free-falling, which doesn't happen again until the final boss fight with Mysterio. The only thing I could knock this level for is probably just the fact that it doesn't shake up the formula as much as some of the other levels do, and the story, comparatively speaking, is quite dull, so that's why it ranks where it ranks. Sorry, Miguel. Nanofibers fused with bioorganic circuitry. Only one corporation has technology advanced enough for this. Al. Electro is the first Ultimate Spider-Man level, and it's pretty good. Moments that stood out were the three boss fights with Electro, which were all very fun, with the highlight being the fight at the end with the giant Electro over the dam. The parts with Spider-Man running across the power lines were pretty entertaining too, and kept me on my toes, and for the most part the rest of the level isn't anything special. I liked the banter between Spider-Man and Electro, as Spider-Man had a lot of really funny quips this time around. See what I can do now? I am so impressed. I've never seen anyone start a truck before. Laugh it up, loser! And the introduction of the Rage Mode really helped this level out because it's a pretty fun mechanic that makes the Ultimate Spider-Man more interesting to play. Overall, it's a solid level and that's why it's at number 9. And that's why you never make toast in the bathtub. Congratulations, Spider-Man. You really showed him what's what. Wah wah. Hammerhead is the first of the Spider-Man Noir levels, and it starts them off with a bang. This level is super fun as all the Noir levels are because of their heavy focus on stealth. These levels do a fantastic job of integrating stealth into the gameplay, and this one is no exception. Right off the bat, I can think of a lot of really amazing moments in this level. The fight with the Gatling gun, the part where Spider-Man is spying on Hammerhead and his goons from the ceiling, the fight on the train tracks, and the final boss were all highlights of this wonderful level. The only real drawback for this one is that the story isn't the most compelling, but that doesn't matter much to me because the gameplay is too good. And while the banter between Spider-Man and the villain isn't as present in this one as it is in the others, the conversation with Madam Web at the end more than makes up for it. Great level. Thank you, Spider-Man. The floating head lady appreciates your assistance. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry about that. I'm craving. It's craving time. Craven the Hunter comes in at number 7, and he is by far the best stage that the Amazing Spider-Man has to offer. There are a lot of great stuff in this level. The setting is nice, and a good departure from the environments in the other Amazing Spider-Man levels. The traps that are sprinkled in all over the place give the area a feeling of danger and needing to be on the lookout. The two boss fights are really fun, specifically the first one with the spikes rising from the floor, and the part where Craven is trying to snipe Spider-Man is a fun change of perspective that I quite enjoyed. Other than this, the banter between the two is exemplar. Come! The jungle still holds many surprises. I'm sorry, were you saying something? With the only part I didn't like being the part where you had to raise the platform to the top as I didn't have the most fun raising it, still, the things this level does get right, it knocks out of the park. Excellent Spider-Man, you've done it! And just in time. If I never hear the word hunt again, it'll be too soon. Now to the other fragments. The hunt resumes. Hey, Cardi! Do you know Candace? 
Carnage is the ultimate Spider-Man's final level, and oh boy, what a level. The enemies are mostly dead shield agents that were taken over by Carnage's symbiote, which is a nightmarish sight to see. Additionally, this level takes full advantage of the symbiote's weakness to fire as it uses it both to help Spider-Man defeat Carnage and to try to defeat Spider-Man depending on the progression of the story. Highlights of this level include the two boss fights with Carnage and this fucking sick moment where Spider-Man has to run away from a falling shield plane. This moment is great and is really intense. The story here is also pretty good with shield letting Carnage escape on accident by giving him part of the fragment during testing with Spider-Man owning one of the doctors by saying, Just open the door. Wait, you're going in there after it? Why? Because great power comes with great responsibility. Something you wouldn't understand. This line works so well because it takes a line that we're all familiar with and applies it in a new setting with it being extremely impactful and a good moment. In general, this level cranks the horror up to 100 and I love it all the more for it. Can I say it? Just once? Only if you wish to suffer. Get over here! Entering the top 5, these are levels that do everything exceptionally well and deserve the highest merit. Each of these levels could be anyone's number 1, but this is just my order, and in number 5 we have the Scorpion level from Spider-Man 2099. There's some pretty great stuff gameplay-wise in this level, like the eggs which create a new mechanic of burning through doors and vents which have potential secrets, and a skydiving partner that end with falling debris behind Spider-Man, or even the two boss fights which are masterfully crafted. Crafted, but the highlight for me in this level is its story. I love how the tone of this level shifts and turns from a level that seems at first glance to be business as usual into a really interesting moment for the character of Spider-Man 2099. Miguel starts off this level saying that he dislikes Scorpion whose name is Kron and that he didn't even like him when he was human, going in with the mindset that he's just gonna beat the shit out of Kron and get the fragment. But at the start of the first boss, Scorpion says he wants to use the fragment to make himself human again. This doesn't phase Miguel too much but the jokes and puns start to slow down here, until the last boss, which is in Scorpion's lair, where Miguel finds out that Scorpion just wants to be accepted and stop hiding. At this moment, the jokes cease, and Spider-Man doesn't quip throughout the entire fight, and after it's over, Spider-Man apologizes for taking the fragment, with Madam Web congratulating him and him responding with, Yeah, then how come I feel so bad about it? This level sent chills up my spine as an 8 year old, and it's still very effective now. The story definitely earns this level a number 5 spot. There is a vulture in front of my- Oh my- This is not your land! This spot proudly goes to the vulture from Spider-Man Noir, and it takes this spot for a multitude of reasons. The gameplay has a lot of fun segments, such as the part with the windows where Spider-Man has to wall crawl and stay away from lit windows as to not be spotted by goons, a runaway part with the train, and a burning building which has lots of twists and turns, with parts of debris flying off the roof and everything. This level also has an interesting story, with it being revealed that Vulture killed and cannibalized Uncle Ben, making this level a lot more personal. The Vulture overall was a scary character, as he had an amazing design that made him look almost inhuman, and it added a layer of uncanny valley to him, which I thoroughly enjoyed. That's not why the level got the number 4 spot though, as the reason why is for its imagery. The imagery in this level is heavily inspired by movies in the German Expressionist era, and that helps a lot. Shots like this feel like they're taken straight from a German Expressionist movie. On top of that, the narrow alleyways and corridors give this level a claustrophobic feel that I feel makes the environment all the better. It's over for you, filthy vermin. Osborne's next. If I were a rich man, 
Entering the top three with number three being the 2099 fight against Dr. Octopus. This level immediately starts off with the skydiving segment, only this time Dr. Octopus is trying to kill you with her arms as well. I love this part, as you have to balance being slow enough to where you can dodge the arms, but also being fast enough to where you don't get blown up. After this, there are two mini boss fights which are fine, and one really good moment where Miguel has to outrun another explosion while having to save a doctor who helped him. This all culminates into a great boss fight against Dr. Octopus. The banter here is also really funny. Welcome to the Shadow Division, Spider-Man. Tomorrow's weapons develop today. And at the heart of it all, my masterpiece. Impressive, isn't it? Eh. What do you mean, meh? I've seen one of these before. No, you haven't. I have. I, I totally have. It's a condensed matter reactor, the only one in existence. Is that what it is? Oh. <laughs> what made this level so interesting, though, is the non-linearity of it. The game does not hold your hand or tell you to do things in a specific order. Instead, the player gets to decide which technical thing I don't know what these things are. To disable first, and in which order. Do you want to do the scenes where you run away from the explosion first? Or do you want to do it by numerical order? Do you want to do the two mini bosses with Dr. Octopus first? Or save them till the end? This gives a player a refreshing amount of freedom in this linear game, and in my opinion, earns it the number three spot. Also, Shattered Dimensions did it first. Don't at me. Now. Let's get this back where it belongs. Hello, my dear. Coming up in second place is the Green Goblin fight from Spider-Man Noir, which is fan-fucking-tastic. Where do I begin? Right off the bat, I can think of multiple segments right off the top of my head that were amazing. The part with the ferris wheel rolling towards the guy in the roller coaster cart. The part with multiple doors where you need to find the right version in order not to die in a room full of gas. The part where Spider-Man's vision gets blurry and you have to fight off enemies with that handicap. The part where Spider-Man climbs on the wall to get to a door where enemies are shining flashlights at it looking for him. The part with the roller coaster track spiraling down in a hallway with gas shooting up intermittently. These are all moments that I can recall off the top of my head and they make this level so fun. What gives this level the number two spot is its diversity. There is so much jam packed into this level and it is all brilliantly executed. Even small tweaks to the noir formula are interesting and add a lot to the level such as the fireworks during stealth segments which lighten up the entire carnival and where if Spider man is being obscured by shadows he is temporarily able to be spotted. This keeps the player on their toes and makes them constantly try to get out of enemy sights. The boss fight is great too. Having to hide from the goblin and only getting great attacks on him in the dark shows how powerful he is and establishes him as a threat which makes it all the more satisfying when you kick his ass. Top tier game design but it gets better. Back in the cage. Eh? Back to the freak show. Oh, boo hoo. Number one, the challenge demands satisfaction. If they apologize, no need for further action. For number one, how could I not pick Deadpool from the Ultimate Universe? I mean, it's Deadpool. Okay, but in all seriousness, this level is a culmination of everything in the previous top 5 spots, and I'll explain how. For story, this level opts to take a comical route of having Spider-Man be invited to a game show where the prize is a fragment, which isn't the most complex story, but the TV show setting makes for some good comedy. The atmosphere is great here too, as instead of being scary like in the Vulture level, it's hilarious, with Deadpool's face and goons being spread everywhere which immediately establishes a light-hearted tone. This level is also extremely open, 
allowing the player to explore this place with free will and destroy the cameras in whatever order they choose. And as for level design, this level has a lot of nooks and crannies as well as an amazing sequence of Spider-Man having to avoid tsunamis culminating into a fucking awesome moment of him having to web zip through a ship to get to the final boss. I mean, just watch this shit. The bosses in this level are stellar, especially the last one, with many punching bag looking things that fall and explode, and the banter between Spider-Man and Deadpool is top notch. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Pain Factor! Is there a mute button for him? The team really outdid themselves with this one. We'll be right back after these messages. Another successful mission. You get a high rating for that. Aren't they all? Um, just one thing. How do I get home? Hey everyone, Kribby from the editing room here. Funny story, I actually forgot to rank all the different Spider-Men based on how many levels of theirs are great. So here's how the ranking system's gonna go. I'm just gonna add every single place that each Spider-Man are in, basically like 12th and 11th place or whatever, and like add those together and then come up with like the total amount of points, which means that the more points that a Spider-Man has, the worse they are. So here we go. In in last place we have the amazing Spider-Man with 30 points, not surprising anyone. His last and second to last place spots probably ruined the whole thing for him. But yeah, in third place we have 2099 with 18 points, which is pretty respectable, but definitely bogged down by that 10th place. In second place, we have the Ultimate Spider-Man, definitely aided by the first place spot, but seeing as the other two outings were slightly middling, it had the least amount. And first place is Noir with 14 points. Overall, just because Noir has the best play style, the most enjoyable one, obviously he was going to get this one. So yeah, and now we'll just jump right back into the conclusion part of this video. <laughs> So that was my ranking for all 12 levels of Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. I hope you all enjoyed, and feel free to comment what your list would be in the comments below. I read all the comments, and whatever comment I like the best will be in my next video, I guess. Thanks for waiting on the WandaVision video. It's taken longer than I expected, but... I will continue to work on it and hopefully have it out before Christmas. Additionally, I'm planning to make a video on Gotham Knights when that game comes out, so that may be my next video, but know that I'm working on the WandaVision video, I promise. Anyway, I will see you all later. Bye bye